Hello my friends, this is Patty Bennett. I am a demonstrator for Stampin' Up! and all of the products you're seeing here are Stampin' Up! products. I am going to show you how to make these beautiful backgrounds. I had not seen this technique and hopefully it's going to be something new to you to show you a really easy way to make a beautiful looking watercolor background. We are also going to be talking about the Thoughtful Moments Hybrid Embossing Folder and how to create these really cool die cut greetings with color on them. So this is going to be part one of this video and then at the end I'm going to show you how to do this. So if you already know how to use this Thoughtful Moments Hybrid Embossing Folder with the brayer and making these cute little die cuts, you can just watch the first half of this video. You don't have to continue to the end, but if you'd like to see that, then stay tuned. So my name, again, is Patty Bennett. I blog at pattystamps.com. I actually have over 6,000 blog posts on there for you. I've been a demonstrator for about 28 years, and I love to share my creations with you. So I hope you enjoy this video. This is not a live video. Usually you're used to seeing me live. This is pre-recorded. So we're going to get to it here. I'm just going to move these out of the way because we are going to talk about those in the second half, like I said. To make these beautiful watercolor backgrounds, we are using Stampin' Up! Fluid Watercolor Paper. I have just cut my sheets in half. All of these card fronts are half sheet size, so that's what I've used. You will need ink refills or re-inkers, whatever you would like to call them, and experiment and have fun picking two or three colors that kind of go together. I'll explain my color combos as we go. And then the last thing you're going to need are some baby wipes. And I don't even know where I got these. It, they're called Signature Care. I think it was a dollar store or a Big Lots type of a package. It's, it, it's not a name brand. But what's important is that your baby wipes be fairly moist. This is not going to work with a dried out baby wipe, just, just to let you know. So I saw this technique earlier, or, or about a week ago, on the Demonstrator Planning Place, which is a place of Facebook group, excuse me, for Stampin' Up! demonstrators. And Natalie White, one of the DDMs at Stampin' Up! was demonstrating this, and I had never seen this. I've heard of, sorry if that's loud, I'm trying to get out some baby wipes here. <laughs> I've heard of using a baby wipe and dropping your ink on there and using it to ink a stamp or create a background or something like that. I've heard of that for years. What I had not heard of was applying it to watercolor paper. So let me show you this. I'm just going to scoot these because I don't want to get ink on my finished cards. So on my baby wipe, that was what? Maybe four-ish drops, I think. I'm just going to try to hide those reflections. There we go. And then what's important, well, what's helpful, I should put it that way, is the glass mat from Stampin' Up. If you don't have that, you could use a silicone sheet or a, a piece of glass that you might have. But this is going to make this technique a lot easier. Uh, dab a little off just to kind of spread that ink and then simply start to swirl. And I was absolutely amazed at that. Like, it's just gorgeous. That was no effort whatsoever. And I am going to do three at once. And I'll kind of show you why here as we go. What's going to happen as we go from the first to the second to the third background is this ink is going to get a little lighter. And you can see there's still more. I could keep going. I could make, I don't know, three, four, five more of these. But I'm just going to go with three. I'm going to set the berry burst aside. So that was berry burst. I'm going to grab the Daffodil Delight, a fresh baby wipe. 
So what, maybe like kind of four or five little dribbles there. I'm gonna go back to that first one, but first I'm just gonna wipe away some of that berry burst that's left on the glass. Okay, dab a little off and go with some Daffodil Delight here. Go to my second one. More Daffodil Delight. Can you believe how just how easy this color goes on? Oh my goodness. It's just like melting on there. Isn't that beautiful? I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why this is so amazing to me. I just think it is just beyond, beyond gorgeous. So then our color in the middle is Flirty Flamingo. And this color is going to kind of uh, blend with these other two. So I'm going to put it in the center. And then you can see as I go over the yellow and as I go over the berry burst, I'm sort of creating yet another color. Almost like it's five colors of a rainbow. And then I'm going to just come back up from the bottom with the yellow again to kind of blend in that line. And there you go. Look, look how many colors it appears that you get with just using those three. I just think this is gorgeous. I This just, oh, it makes me so happy. Just so happy. This makes me happy. I love playing with color. So the reason that we're doing, well, a couple reasons that we're doing three. One is that there's plenty of ink on here. Like, why waste the ink? I'm not going to throw away this uh, baby wipe that has so much potential left on it. But what I thought was so pretty was that we're actually kind of getting like a bolder one, a middle one, and then a softer one by doing this. So then when they dry, then you can kind of decide which one do I want because maybe you want a softer look to your project or a bolder look to your project. So I'm going to move those put these out here for you so you can see. So I think that was actually kind of the middle one. I, they end up looking fairly similar in the end, but you can, I hope you can see anyway on camera that it does kind of go from darker to lighter as we were using up that ink. And I just think this is absolutely gorgeous and amazing. I love how the colors blend together. I just think this is this is so much fun. I wanted to show you, and I hope it shows up on camera. Do you see with this blue one that I did, Lost Lagoon and Parakeet Party, do you see kind of those splotches and splatters? For that, I let it dry a little bit, not like all the way. And I took my aqua painter with water in it. I squeezed over here just to get the water flowing onto the tip. And then I splatted like that. I'm not going to splatter these because I don't want these splattered necessarily. But I just did this and hit it against my finger so that water would splatter. And as it does that and it starts to dry, it lifts some of the color. So that is an option. Let me show you two more options here just of ways that you can um, just kind of alter or make these different. You can also take a wink of Stella and you can just squeeze so that it starts to come to the tip and then you can splatter like this or you can flick like this and you will get sparkles on your background. The other fun thing that you can do and I think, what color do I want to use? Maybe we'll try the Lost Lagoon. You can also use a marker, either the Stampin' Blend or the regular marker, and you can splatter like this so that you get um, 
more speckles in a darker color. So lots of different ways that you can kind of enhance these backgrounds once you have them done and um, ready to use. Then you can decide, you know, what do I want to do to make this a little different? So let me just wipe this off. And this glass mat, by the way, uh, if you haven't heard about it, you can see more information in the Celebration brochure. This is for January, February 2024. Uh, here it is. And it's in the back here. And it is a special offer for anyone who would like to join Stampin' Up! You get the mat, you get the cloth, and you get this little plastic tray as a free gift with your starter kit if you want to, or you can select to add $30 in product to your starter kit. But that's what this is, and it was available on a pre-order basis to Stampin' Up! demonstrators in December, which is why I have one. But that is how you can get it, and Stampin' Up! has said that they're aren't any promises about it being available in the future. So we don't know what's going to happen with um, any future availability. But that's, that's how you do it. And you can do any colors you want. And I just think these are fabulous. So I'll go over these cards real quickly. Then I'm going to show you how to do the little greetings that go on there with the Thoughtful Moments Hybrid Embossing Folder. So this one I did... Let's see, what is this one called? Adoring Hearts Embossing Folder. Embossed a couple hearts, layer them onto a circle with the greeting, layered it twice onto colors that pull out the colors of the ink I used, and like simple, add some purple dots and we're done. Very simple. Uh, this was inspired by the cards that Natalie White made on the demonstrator planning place. She kept them very simple with these die cut greetings. So I thought I would just try the same. And this one um, was, if I didn't tell you, I'm sorry, this one was Fresh Freesia, Orchid Oasis and Misty Moonlight. So kind of the purples and blues in the background. And I'll show you how I got kind of this two-tone look on the greeting. You can see that the paper is one shade and the ink is another. So I'm going to show you that next. And I loved just the polka dot holes on this die cut. And the scallop is from Zany Zoo. So I thought that was super cute. And again, purple dots. And then this one, I was trying to think of something a little different to do, and I sacrificed one of my backgrounds, and I used my heartfelt hexagon punch, punched out some shapes, layered three of them behind the greeting. Just something a little different, a little fun, and then the celebrate die cut and in color dots on there. So those were the three cards that I made with the three different color combinations. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can click the description box below. There's a link to the, excuse me, to the blog post that has these cards. So if you want to save them or pin them, if you want the shopping links, they're in the description box. They're also on my blog post at pattystamps.com. So you'll be able to find that information and save those cards. And these, depending on your weather and the temperature in your home and whatnot, these seem to dry in about anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. It just depends. Like right here, it's kind of gloomy weather. So these are probably going to take up maybe up to an hour to be fully dry. And I wouldn't adhere them onto a card until they're completely dry. But man, they're so pretty. I I really <laughs> hope you like these. I I just think they're tons of fun to play with all different color combinations. So now let's look at the Thoughtful Moments Hybrid Embossing Folder and how I did the greetings by adding color with the brayer. And I think this is really fun and it might be a little confusing, so I always think it's helpful to show everybody how to do this. I did talk about this on an earlier video, but I think it might have gotten a little lost in that in that video because we talked about so many different things. So this is going to be 
basically the outcome. You're going to get die cuts with words. And depending on if you put ink on the folder or on the paper later, you get a different look. And of course, you can do it without any ink at all. It would just be a raised um, image of the words. So let me show you. If you wanted just an outline, you would ink your brayer and roll it on this side, the side with the Stampin' Up! logo. You would roll it on there. You would put your die on, and it kind of clicks in. Got too many layers happening here. It kind of clicks in place, so it kind of will um, hold itself in place there. And then what I used was the Flight and Airy Celebration paper. And I chose the two patterns that have these sort of watercolor wash backgrounds. So that's the other side. You could do this with plain cardstock, doesn't matter. You would put your paper in, close it up, run it through your die cut machine, and that's how you get just sort of the outline of the words. I personally liked this look better where it was more filled in. So this is what I'm going to demo for you. So I put my die over here. It kind of, see, it kind of clicks in place like it's not moving. So then you know it's in the right spot. I put my paper on. I closed it up and I ran it through my die cut machine and then I added the ink. But I'm going to try something new and I hope this works because I haven't tried this before. It's going to be a little embarrassing if it doesn't work. But what I was actually making these with Tammy, my friend Tammy Savello, we were talking about this and I said what would be helpful is if there was a little bit of adhesive over here on this side because what I want it to do is I want my paper to stick to this side when I take it out of my embossing machine. So that's my goal. We're going to see if that helps. <laughs> so hang on one second. I'm just going to turn around and I'm going to die cut this. I'll be right back with you. Okay, so here we are. So now, like I said, the goal is I really want my paper to stick on this side of the folder. So let's see if we accomplished that. I want all the little pieces to stay in and I want the paper to stay stuck. Oh, look, it worked. So there is a tip. If you can keep that stuck in there like that, I think you're gonna be happier with this outcome. So then the brayer, I'm just gathering my ink here. And this is fresh freesia. You could do whatever color. I might actually need to go with Highland Heather, but we'll see how this looks. Now I can't remember. This must be freesia, though. I think it is. We'll see how it looks. Okay, now here's my goal is to lightly add color and I know it's kind of looking like a mess but you're going to see when we take these out they are going to have color on the raised portion. So it's much better to keep adding a few light layers of ink than to do one heavy handed uh, pass. You don't want to do that. You just want to add light, light layers of ink. Until your raised portions are covered. And I think I forgot to actually say this part. The reason I'm leaving it in the folder is because 
the raised portion of the folder is helping these images to get the ink just on the raised portions. I can see just a couple spots here. I want just a little bit more ink, just a little bit. I'm almost afraid to do like this one more coat, but, but I can just see a couple spots where it's a little lighter than I want. Oops. Okay, so this brayer, by the way, if you haven't figured this out, do you see these little feet sticking up? You want them sticking upwards when you're brayering. When you're done for a moment or for a long time, you turn it over this way and they make themselves into little feet to hold them, um, to hold it up. Okay, so anyway, now... We can take this messy part off because I know you're just cringing at how crazy that looks. And I'm just pulling it off of the, the glue dots. Okay, so here's all of our beautiful, aren't they pretty? And the ink. So these aren't stuck because these didn't have glue. But look how pretty. So then it only inked the raised areas, and that was my goal. It's, you know, maybe a little uneven, and you could go over it one more time just to be sure. But for the most part, this is the technique that I found works the best, and it allowed me to get ink onto the raised portions, and you can really really read those words. So you don't have to use a designer paper like this. You can just use cardstock or you could experiment with other designer papers. I think that would be a lot of fun. But it's just totally up to you what you would like to do with your colors and um, everything that you're creating with this. And then I thought these looked really pretty with this color palette. So that's why I was um, electing to kind of do this and show you how pretty that is. Isn't this amazing? So there you go. There's kind of a two for one video for you. So you had the lesson in making the backgrounds with the baby wipes and the reinkers, and then how to create these really great die cut words. And again, that's page 18 of the January to April 2024 catalog, Thoughtful Moments Hybrid Embossing Folder, and then the brayer is sold separately. And if you do not have a demonstrator, if you need catalogs or you need to order, pattystamps.com has links for ordering and for requesting a catalog or to contact me if you need more information about something. But I hope that you enjoyed this. I just think these are fabulous. I thank Natalie for turning me on to this new technique that I did not know about. And I can't wait to hear what colors you decide to use. <laughs> so thanks, friends, for joining me. And I will see you next time on the next video.